when we previously looked at confidence intervals, we needed a population standard deviation. We needed to actually know the population standard deviation to find the confidence interval for the mean. But that's a really rare thing to have. It's not very common for us to actually have that population standard deviation. So what do we do if we don't have it? If we don't have the population standard deviation, then we're going to need to use the sample standard deviation and what's known as the student's t-distribution. This is very, very similar to the normal distribution, but there are a few differences. The first thing is that the standard deviation is greater than 1. In a normal distribution, the standard deviation was exactly 1. In a student's t-distribution, it's greater than 1. The t-distribution is actually a family of curves based on this idea of degrees of freedom. And degrees of freedom is very much related to sample size. And as sample size increases and increases, this distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. So it's getting closer and closer to the normal distribution as we get larger and larger sample sizes. Here's a picture that kind of demonstrates the idea of the student t distribution. This top curve, the largest one, is the normal distribution. The dotted one, the one directly underneath that one, has 9 degrees of freedom. And then this dashed one at the bottom has 2 degrees of freedom. So it is very, very related to the normal distribution and it does have the general shape. But depending on your degrees of freedom, it's going to be a little shorter and wider than the standard normal curve. So when we don't have population standard deviation, this is the distribution we need to use. And for now, we're going to look at calculating confidence intervals with this t distribution. Here's the general formula for the confidence intervals knowing the sample standard deviation only. Once again, the left and right is the same except for plus or minus. And this thing that we're adding and subtracting from each side is known as the margin of error. So the t comes from the t distribution, and we can get that on tables. We're going to use a calculator to find it for us. s is our sample standard deviation, and n is the sample size. We're going to use the GeoGebra graphing calculator to help us calculate these confidence intervals. And before, whenever we had population standard deviation, we used the z-mean estimate. If we don't have population standard deviation, we use the t-mean estimate. And the only thing that changes in the inputs is instead of population standard deviation, we have sample standard deviation. So let's look at some examples. So my first problem, we know that height is normally distributed. We have a random sample of 10 people that had an average height of 67 inches with sample standard deviation 3 inches. And we want a 95% confidence interval for the mean height. When performing these, we either needed to know that it was normally distributed or have a sample size bigger than 30. So we do have that this is normally distributed, so we can actually use this idea. So let's start by writing down the information that we have. We start with x bar, the sample mean. And we know this sample had an average height of 67 inches. So that's x bar. It specifically says sample standard deviation so that we know we have s instead of sigma. Knowing which type of standard deviation that you have is key to knowing if you should use the normal distribution or the t distribution. And it is very, very subtle. We're essentially just trying to figure out what kind of standard deviation it is. Typically, we can figure that out by the sentence. In this case, it specifically says it's sample standard deviation. n is the sample size, which in this case is 10 people. And finally, our confidence level is 95%. Now that we have that, we can start to look at how to type this into the calculator. We'll use the t-mean estimate command, and we have the sample mean, sample standard deviation, sample size, and confidence level. So let's go over to the calculator. Here's my graphing calculator. I'll hit the three dots and go down to statistics. And we're looking for the t-mean estimate. So we'll go down to the t's, and we see the t-mean estimate. We then had our sample mean, which was 67. Our sample standard deviation was 3. Sample size was 10. And my confidence level was 0.95. So we see our two numbers are 64.9 and 69.1. So what this has told us is there is a 95% chance that the true mean height is between 64.9 and 69.1. Let's do another example. Our next example, we select 42 apples from an apple tree, and we get an average weight of 86 grams with standard deviation 6.2 grams. 
we want to find a 90% confidence interval for the true mean weight. Since the sample size is larger than 30, we don't need to worry about it being normally distributed. But we do see that our standard deviation is a sample standard deviation, so we're going to be using the t-mean estimate. So let's write down what we know. We start with x bar, and we see that the average weight of our sample was 86 grams, so that's x bar. Our sample standard deviation was 6.2. Our sample size is 42. And finally, our confidence level. We wanted a 90% confidence interval, so 0.9. We can then use our command for our calculator. Like I said before, we're using the t-distribution, so we want to use the t-mean estimate. So let's go over to the calculator. So we click on the three dots and select the t-mean estimate. Our sample mean was 86. Sample standard deviation was 6.2. Sample size is 42. And we're looking at a 90% confidence interval, so 0.9. And we get that it's somewhere between 84.4 and 87.6. So we now know that there's a 90% chance that the true average weight of the apples on this particular tree is between 84.4 grams and 87.6 grams.